How's it going guys, it's Mr Lone Wolf and uh, today, nothing too crazy or anything, just uh, I've been testing out a few trucks on this Battle on the Ice contest on the new Lake Covd map and um, yeah, I just wanted to give it a go really, it gives you, I think it's four minutes, uh, you've got to get under four minutes to get a gold medal and uh, to be honest it ain't that easy, like I've been trying a few different vehicles but I only tried one go per vehicle, as you can see there's basically different checkpoints, I suppose around an island in the middle, but it's obviously got frozen water and ice and that all around it. Um, and yeah, you've got to do a lap, really. You near enough end up back where you started, just like 10 or 20 metres past it. And uh, yeah, I'll give the Tegu a go, I'll give a few of them a go, and there's no real way to get round it unless you're going to drive over plenty of bits of ice. You can do like I am there, I did it that tree, but... I didn't even like, this is one of my first goes on it, so I didn't even uh, really know the route yet. But yeah, I'm sticking to like the right instead of going on that ice there. And I was in the end, I was, uh, this wasn't the first vehicle I took over, I just wanted to put this one first in the video. But um, before long, I kind of, like, I've already tried a lot of vehicles on the ice, unless you, unless you have big wide tyres most stuff, including chained, what are just more the width of the tyres, they um, punch through the ice most of the time, obviously there is a few light vehicles, I've not, I don't think I've tried the Zix, yeah I'm not saying the Zix would be very good for this mission, I don't know though, obviously you've got to find that combination between lightness and wide tyres, but you also want a bit of speed, you preferably don't want to get held up by snow too much, but yeah if you've got too much weight you're going to drop through the ice, and uh, it's a bit of an interesting one, but it's definitely more difficult than some of the others. And the amount of time that it gives you is a lot more limited. Like, say that uh, Drown Lands contest taking the container. I believe it gives you like 8 minutes or something to get gold. And uh, I've done it in about 2.28. That Timmy Gun guy's done it in about 2.13, if not less than that now, in the Twin Stair. So... Yeah, you could almost do that mission. Well, you could do it three times over and still have spare time. With this one, I've not been able to get under three minutes. Like, it's definitely... Well, some of these get over four minutes. I still think... Um, I only had, like, say, one go with each truck. So, I didn't come back, like, five times and, you know, kind of get the best one of each one. I just wanted to try a few different trucks. I've had a bit of a headache all night, to be honest. No, nothing too bad, not like anything like a migraine or anything, but... Yeah, I didn't want to attempt anything like another review video or anything, so uh, I just fancied a bit more of a chilled video. I was doing some missions earlier. I'm skint again because uh, I bought that Azov Antarctic thing yesterday. And I've not actually sold it back yet. While I've actually got it, I'm still undecided whether I'm going to sell it or not. <laughs> I do like the way it ran them trees over at the farm. Um... There's a couple of things it did well, and then there's other things where I would prefer the cat over it because, like, for one, the cat doesn't tip anywhere near as easily. Yeah, if I sold it and I had 200 grand, I'd only <laughs> blow it on something in a matter of minutes, and then until I'm skint again, so. Yeah, while I've got it and I've got it fully upgraded and everything, I'm, uh, I'm testing out a few different things on this map. I did a bit of gameplay with it earlier, but to be honest, it does need chain tyres or something like that. There's quite a lot of trucks now, especially with maps like this, that need wide tyres that also grip on ice. This sort of ice isn't that bad when you're not punching through it, but you know like near the garage when you sort of smash through that fence, the actual just pure blue ice is like, yeah, you just wheel spin like crazy on it. That tree cocked me up a bit, because as I punched through the ice it kind of hit my barrier uh, my barrier, my bumper, and normally those trees have been disappearing pretty quick recently, but yeah, absolutely got stuck on me that time. Not that it makes a lot of difference, I'm already um, over the gold time now. And yeah, I started to like bring different trucks. Funnily enough, the first truck for, I don't even know why, what made me choose it, the first truck I tried was the Khan Marshall. And uh, as you'll see a little bit later, the Khan Marshall is the only one that I've now had two goes on because it was the very first truck I used so I didn't even really know where I was going or anything and uh, yeah that's why at the end 
I, I'd add another go eventually just because I knew I could get a better time and yeah, as it took the first run I uh, figured it deserved it now I knew what I was doing a bit better. This thing, I won't show you all of it but it was doing not too bad at first but then towards like the middle and the second half of this contest there's a lot of ice that you yeah, you go through and then this thing as you can see when it drops down it is pretty heavy this truck so there's not a lot of ice you drive over that it won't break into and um, yeah if you're not you know you forget the purposes of trying to race against the clock on a contest this thing is pretty decent uh, it will go through the ice but touch wood again I've never I still haven't got stuck in the ice with it yet but yeah for the purposes of this contest it's there's too much ice and it's uh, it's not happy about it. Again, I still think if this thing had um, diffs always on, at least I'd be able to go in the high range gear. You see where you see the pattern of like when you turn diffs on and off? Someone mentioned it earlier and it's a very good point and I tested it out. That sometimes when you turn diffs on you just see like a straight line through the truck with the axles. And other times when you turn in, you see like a zigzaggy line. And he was saying, like, was that, you know, maybe is that what's affecting the diffs or something? And I tested it out earlier, and essentially, when you put the diffs on, whilst you're in a straight line with, like, an articulated truck, it just does the normal drawing, and then when you're articulated fully, it does, like, the zigzag one, but they're both the same thing. So as you can see there, I got about seven odd minutes, and it wasn't really close. Next up was this, and I've gotta say I don't I certainly don't dislike the Tatra and it's a beast in certain off-road situations but as you can see it's not got the highest ground clearance like I don't know if I'd go as far as to say this is overrated but I think at the point we all kind of discovered the TUZ we'd been grinding the game with less than fully upgraded vehicles and probably a fairly limited choice of vehicles that they sort of gave us and we found free on the map by the time you've man been able to buy a lot of vehicles and try all the top upgrades, yeah, I, I wouldn't say this is like leaps and bounds ahead of anything else, and it also still is a bit slow for long-term use for me, because it's got the advanced special. It's not even anything against this, I, I personally believe the advanced special is a bit too slow, but in some of the bigger vehicles, I believe it might be because they've got bigger tyres, like the Azov Antarctic didn't feel that slow when I was going say flat out down a road but because it's got much bigger tyres maybe like obviously it'll travel further in one turn of the tyres so I'm not sure also while I'm on it I'm surprised this thing hasn't got chained tyres it's only got the muds which are very good like across snow like this apart from the bits of snow in this map that just automatically slow you down to a crawl um, yeah this thing is like the beast through snow, through mud, particularly like boggy mud and that's where it does pretty well compared to other stuff. You see there though, I did clip the tyre and that does happen to me. I wouldn't say loads with this, but I would at least say it's... Yeah, it does it quite a bit. It can do it a lot because it's got uh, the two front axles or steering axles. If you clip a tree or a rock with the second axle in, which could be sticking out to the side a bit if you're turning, it catches it like in the worst possible place, springs the suspension and you roll, but as you did see, one very nice thing about this Tatran is practically all of its weight is like right at the bottom on the chassis, so even though I rolled over to my side, it's a bit like one of them weeble wobble things and it uh, goes back to its wheels. Not all the time, obviously, but I'd say it's better than a lot of vehicles for that because, say, that A's of Antarctic, once you've rolled that on the side, like, it's on its side. <laughs> and I do agree, actually, someone was saying as well with that A's of Antarctic that it's a bit too heavy for what it is, and it's like, I sort of agree, like, that cabin on top of it. Um. Again, it's not like specifically densely weighted, but it's got weight to it. And in real life, if that was some Antarctic prototype vehicle, that cabin will be made of like fiberglass or something. It'll weigh practically nothing. The cab, all of it that's above the chassis, is basically just seats and a steering wheel. So in real life, like 90-95% of that truck's weight is 
at the wheels and the chassis or lower whereas in this game it's definitely got the weight kind of spread throughout it so because it's quite tall and narrow that's where I do believe the cat 745c like I said is it sits wider and it's a lot less likely to tip but I do think it's I don't know a bit slower and stuff as well I was trying to go gentle. I honestly don't think being gentle <laughs> over the ice makes any difference. Like, when I first was testing some things out, it seemed like slower was a bit better than faster, but I'm not so sure anymore. I think, I don't know, you know, like an old Super Mario level or something, if you're running along, like, a bridge, but the pieces drop off just as you run on them so you've got to constantly sprint forward it's almost a little bit like that where the longer you sit on a specific piece of ice the more likely you are to go through it the quicker you can just plow over it it seems to uh yeah help more than it hinders i would say but again nothing against this thing it's just a bit slow i am keeping it medium low at the minute i was trying to see like yeah, once it was digging in. To be honest, medium low, and even as well, somebody else said low low is not bad in the ice. And I have to say, like, I still think medium low was nice as well, and it had a bit more bite when it was trying to get the wheels out. However, I did test a few things out with low low, as the guy mentioned, and uh, yeah, I do think low low is actually in some trucks like makes sense for once like before this map I don't think I've ever used well, I might use low low in the reviews and blah 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 but in my own time if I was ever in a situation where low low is the only option I would winch to something or probably recover and bring back a different vehicle that can go through faster depends obviously if it's only like a tiny bit then I'll deal with it but yeah I suppose that's overall why I prefer like I said the high range because Unless I'm on, say, Zimnigorsk and it's I'm going down a pure, rough, boggy, muddy road, then I can make up more time by going faster on the fast bits than faster on the slow bits. So, if I've only got 5% some deep, thick, boggy mud on my journey, then, yeah, the extra 3 mile an hour in there doesn't make up for the 30 mile an hour loss on all the other bits. And yeah, I mean, attaching it still did get stuck once or twice. Like I say, the ground clear. I was trying it earlier over rocks. And it appears there's actually like an invisible another layer under the tatrim where I was sat like a couple of inches above the rock where it looked like I wasn't quite hitting it yet, but I was. So next up was there. I already knew from way back there. Like, you twat. The yar, as much as I do like it, it is a tosser for rolling <laughs> when stuff like that happens. But I was kind of learning at this point that wide mud tyres like this is the way to go really because as you can see it's going along the ice pretty nice. Well obviously the first vehicle I brought was the Khan Marshall and again I don't even know why and then I did my lap. I didn't know what that meant though as in like what does that, how good is that relative to everything else. Um, yeah, I used some other vehicles that had narrower tyres, the Voron Grad. Uh, I got stuck almost as I was there, but I already knew, like, it's punching through the ice. And I believe that's when I went back and got this. And I do like this, but it does feel a little bit underpowered sometimes. I don't know, yeah, kind of. Or a bit slow to get the power there. Like, when you dip in the ice here, it just... I don't know. It looks like it should be more capable than it's been allowed to be in this game. Like even going across this snow, look how slow it is and it's like, look at the thing. It's made for snow. I bet you that entire chassis or like the red bit you can see is fiberglass or something. I doubt it'd be carbon fiber. That's a bit expensive. Like, that's why this thing has got a small engine, that's why the front's very sort of narrow, you've got like big wheel arches but not a lot of engine room. Um, yeah, it's got big massive inflatable like spongy tyres. Like this thing is purely made to go on terrain like this and yet I just always feel a bit like 
Come on, where is it? Obviously, if you're going down a road or something, it does pick up pretty nicely then. And again, I certainly don't dislike the thing. I just think some things have been a bit over-punished in this game. Which I get is for the sakes of balancing and stuff, but... Yeah. <laughs> Who wants a balance truck when you're trying to do a contest? I need a million horsepower fucking all-wheel drive twin steer with some extra wheels slapped on the middle just for the fun of it. In fact, tracks sod it. Do you know what would be cool, actually? I remember seeing these, like, in various off-roading videos. And I don't even know what they're called, but they look like mini tank tracks, but you can put them on, say, like a 4x4. Four four. You see a lot of, like, American... Dodge Rams or something with them on bombing around in the snow, but I've seen some that were literally just it was still the tyre on the truck but you obviously like bolted and strapped these tracks around it and it had two little extra wheels and it was like a triangle of tracked wheels, but I've also seen others where you obviously remove the wheel completely and it's like more like a typical cog and blah 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 and yeah, but imagine it'd be pretty cool if you could get those Again, I don't know what you'd call them. <laughs> They're like four individual little tracked wheels. But they behave a lot more like tracks. Like I say, they're more a triangle shape. Um, yeah, it'd be pretty damn cool if they added stuff like that into this map. Because especially now, yeah, I believe they do need something other than... Chained are great, but they're too narrow for the ice. These muds support your weight better on the ice. But they're crap like on any slippery ice they're not very good at biting their way back out of the ice once you drop in I suppose it's a little bit like the barrier test where you could do with a bit of bite just to claw your way back up and out of it let me see I mean look there's no diffs are touching the floor this thing should be like a goddamn rally truck in shallow snow and yet it's acting like I don't know it's like it's got little mini wheels on it or something however just I believe was that one by the skin of my teeth it shrinks the screen but I believe it was 358 and obviously four minutes was the was the time to beat it was close but we got it so uh, yeah now, next so I wanted to try that I kind of thought by now this was about the fourth or fifth vehicle I tried but I kind of figured it was on this map this thing does get, again, this is another one that I believe is overly punished by snow. That is, that snow has been fine in every vehicle. It's just one of those bits of snow that's not really an issue, but most is on this map. Yeah, it's funny with this thing. It's got great power to wait, but in certain situations you can definitely tell it's a power to wait statistic and not a power statistic. I wish they would just put the power just tell us the power, tell us the weight, <laughs> and then give us a power to weight ratio, but I still would like to know what I'm dealing with, like, are we talking, yeah, 300 horsepower, or 1,000? And I mean, this is a prime example of the a misleading power to weight statistic. Like, this has got better power to weight than the dolphin, but the dolphin would absolutely eat it alive in basically every situation except ice. But getting to this point, I've got pretty good at getting to this point in, like, well under a minute and stuff, but it's kind of this next section <laughs> is uh, definitely steps it up a bit. And there's not really much choice, you've got to go across big chunks of ice because the little checkpoints you need to get are constantly dotted like left and right over the like the middle of the ice so yeah you've got like I've got to head to that one I'm now on this island I tend to find if you aim towards that bit again and well part of me to be honest if this mission if you was able to do it in like a minute I mean let me know in the comments what you guys have been getting like the times on this mission like I say, you'll see pretty soon. I won't give it away yet, but the Khan Marshal is going to get my best time on here. 
and um, which was nice to be honest because I found that thing pretty bloody useless since I've owned it and again I don't even know what made me think oh I'll try that given that I've never tried this contest before but something told me to bring it and it uh, yeah worked out alright So this thing mostly doesn't go through the ice. If anything is, it will be the front. Not this thing isn't the heaviest, but there is a lot of concentrated weight at the front because it's like more of a cab over shape. I suppose it has technically got a little nose, but certainly no sort of long nose American looking thing. Uh yeah, once it goes through It's not got as much umph as you'd think to get back out of it. But I do also think these mud tyres are a little bit... In real life, I mean, they've got nice big notches of grip on them. Like, I believe they would dig in better than this game allows them to. See, because I went, like, drifting a little bit. Because I steered out of it, I put all the weight on that left wheel. And it, uh, it wasn't happy about it. I still really like this thing, but look at it in snow. I, I haven't drove this much since the review, just because I've been on this map a lot. It's funny though, it shows you how different, or how much better having a garage on a map is, because I haven't been back to Rift since I last recovered my vehicle, and it took about bloody eight minutes to recover eight vehicles, because you have to recover to Zimnagors, load Zimnagors, then drive to Quarry, load Quarry, drive to Rift, load Rift. Oh, sorry, that was to drive the vehicles there. To recover them was still load back, like, load Zimnagors, load Rift, etc. So anyway, this is the car marshal. Like I say, this is only about my seventh or eighth go on this contest. So I did, yeah, six or seven of the vehicles. This is now the second go. One bad thing about this mission, every time you go round, you crack and damage the ice a bit. And I tried um, like quitting to main menu and restarting the map. Most of the time, if I was in the garage when I did the like map refreshing, it replaced all the ice as normal. If I was close by and I did it, it sort of repaired the ice, but it was already like you could see the lines I took through the ice and smashed it, and it was yeah, it kind of looked like. I suppose in real life, if an icebreaker went through there and then it iced up, like you left it another day or two or whatever and it iced back over, but it just wasn't as strong, so... Not that it takes that long to do a map refresh. I suppose quick to make maze, but you're talking about 30 seconds or something, maybe a little longer. But yeah, you definitely want to do it when you're back at the garage, not... Like, parked here, if that ice in front of me was broke, it'd just look, all the ice would look whiter where I've already broke it, and yeah, it's already like it's half done in anyway. So this is another vehicle, just overly punished on snow. I mean, look at the thing. Surely with massive tyres like that, and this thing's got like S plus power rating. This thing, if anything, has more power than it needs. And yeah, there's no diffs catching or anything, but in what's classed as deep snow, and I'll say that lightly because there's a lot of times where some pretty shallow snow seems to be classed as um, deep snow, but yeah, it's just not happy about it. And then when you finally do get a chance to go in a straight line, <laughs> this thing just it's like, well, shall I unpredictably fly left or right? Or shall I do a front flip? Shall I go backwards? But to its credit, so far at least, it's got the fastest time. I honestly, like, I've had a little think. I'm not too sure what'll get the fastest time on this. Like I say, I've not tried that many vehicles, but I kind of quickly learnt that I reckon anything with these sort of custom muds, I don't know if these are quite a class as custom muds, but certainly wider than the average tyres. Um, yeah, it seems to be the best because he got the most chance of actually making it along the ice without going through like so. It's quite funny enough as well, I tried to buy one of these yesterday and I didn't realise that when you buy it, it just 
comes as this with these tyres, I always thought the like season pass one that it gives you for free at the start, I thought this was like a custom version of the Marshall with the big tyres like already stuck on it and I thought I'd be able to buy one and have more normal tyres on it but you can't so yeah that's that idea out the window. But anyway I did get 3 minutes 12 with it which like I said so far is my uh, fastest time around this. And uh, of course it wouldn't be complete if I didn't send the loaf around in his off-road dolphin wellers. Thought I'd give it a go and to be honest credit to the dolphin it did pretty well across all that ice there it's just this last section if it just got one more truck length forward and not that I think it makes a whole lot of difference but this was just after I did that Khan Marshall lap so I'd already weakened the ice a bit on the path I'd taken and like I say this thing is definitely capable of punching through the ice so I'm not saying like oh it would have been fine but if you were to keep, say, doing laps of this map in the Khan Marshall, I'd be willing to bet you'd start falling through patches that you didn't on the previous go and so on. Like, yeah, it'd, it'd be nice to refresh this map each time, but I will say, I did try. Like, say I drive through that ice now that I've just broken. If I stopped now and then recovered, uh, sorry, quit to main menu and then loaded the game back up, that ice will be fixed but you can tell the path I already took through it, it just... the ice already looks a lot whiter, like it's already been broken but it's just been neatly laid back in place so if you want to refresh the ice on the map just do it when you're actually like recovered to garage and you're in the garage so you're going along here, this thing absolutely motors like the off-road dolphin, dolphin and loaf go flying across snow, except for the bits in the map that are like just way over tuned everything gets goes to a crawl in that stupid snow. As you can see though, like yeah, dolphin goes flying along. Um it's just it's it's a bit too heavy to make it always across the ice. And once you punch through, I'll be fair to it, the dolphin's pretty decent at climbing its way back out. Especially considering the ice at the minute can kind of glitch into your bumper and wheels a bit, but... See, places like here, I'm looking now on the replay, I could go round to the right of that rock, so like I say, none of these times, I'm not saying these are fast or slow or otherwise, I really don't know that well myself yet. But I just, um, yeah, like I said, I had a bit of a headache, I didn't want to do anything too crazy tonight. I fancied having a little go though. So uh, yeah, just done a bit of gameplay and all sorts and did a few laps around here. And it's definitely made me curious <laughs> as to what will be the best round here. So he plays like this cost me basically the gold. The gold medal. And it's because it's not like I'm stuck as in I just haven't got the power or anything. Some eyes, those bits sticking up that I broke, would have glitched into one of my tyres. And like I say, it, it, like it locks your tyre in place. I mean, look at the loaf, goddamn professional. He doesn't fall out. Hasn't even got a seatbelt on. <laughs> so you're getting across that bit of ice. Just right at the end, one tyre. Well, probably more than that now, but... If that front one made it to land, I reckon I would have been alright. But yeah, I can see the gold <laughs> slowly slipping away from me. Especially with stuff like this again, just drops in. I did attempt, by the way, to try the Ford F750 and... Uh, one, it's pretty damn slow anyway. And two, when you do go in the ice, the thing's barely got the power to get out or anything. And uh, yeah, you can see a bit of damage there from the Khan Marshal, so didn't help, but I don't think it hindered it that much really. But anyway, that's about it for today. Like I said, nothing too crazy or anything. I just needed a bit of a chilled video tonight, but I hope you've enjoyed. Thanks for watching, and I'll be back soon.